Now kitchens can take a lot of work, but I'm going to show you a simple and effective way of modeling using the components that are available. My name is Jesse Dom, I'm a practicing BIM manager teaching you Revit for free. Let's dive in. Now let's go to the ground floor plan. Right off the bat, I'm going to click on the finished flooring that we have here, and then I'm going to use the glasses down here just to temporarily hide and isolate. I'm going to hide this element. When you place a family, it'll typically sit on top of the closest floor that you have. So if I had left that turned on, I would end up placing my, ca my cabinets 10 millimeters above the floor level. Let's change some of these dimensions. I want to change this to 2200 and put the sink location at 1100 so that it's in the center. When I move my mouse out of there, it accepts the changes and that works. I'm going to move both of these down by 30 millimeters because that's how much we changed it by. Now let's go to component and let's load a family. Inside the library of components that I've added, let's go to components, 55 fixtures, and purpose-made fixtures. For some reason, this is where the cabinets are. Uh, first, I'm going to load in the countertop island. Click open. I'm going to hit the space bar a couple times to rotate this around, and I'm going to place it here. Now, when I place this, I know that I've got instance parameters because I've got these grips here. So I can drag this back, and it's going to snap with the face of this wall, which works for me. I'm also going to change this to 2.6. Let's go back to component, load family. I'm going to bring in the cabinet four drawers. Click open, hit the space bar. The pick point of this family is going to be at the back, which is around there. So I'm going to put this one back here and just leave it off to the side. Let's go load family again. Get this two drawer, cabinet double door two drawer, click open the space bar a few times. We are going to put this one in the corner, but I'm just going to leave it out here so that we can modify some of its parameters first. Go back to component, load family. I want the double door sink unit. Click open. Spin that one around. This one's going to be going in the middle of the back here. Uh, we'll just line it up with this part first. That one's going to be mirrored and that should be good. So with this one, its width is its type right now is a thousand. We're going to duplicate that and just change this to 800 millimeters. Click OK. The width will be 800 and OK. Since that's aligned there, let's turn on the wireframe so that we can see through this. And we'll use the align tool, pick the face of the wall, and click on that. So, see, so you can see that this has offset by. 25 millimeters, which is good. What's the distance there? Ooh, that's gross. 20.4. Let's delete that. What does that leave our distance of? No, that's not okay. So <laughs> always good to put some dimensions in. Even if it looks like it says 980, uh, it's rounding up by 0.4 millimeters. I don't like that. We're going to leave that at 1,000 though. And then we'll come over here and we'll drag that so that it snaps with that. And we've got 975s. 975 as our depth, which that's pretty good. I am going to draw a, ref, a line for reference. Oh, 25.4, oh come on. All right, I'm going to draw this. We're going to copy this over by 25. 25.4 is an inch, so it is, it does make sense, but I like round numbers. I'm going to use the align tool and align this one here. All right, that means our leftover for this is going to be 700 on either side. So let's edit type, let's duplicate, let's call u 700, delete that, and change, change the width to 700. Click OK. Now this is a type. That means that I can copy this one and paste it somewhere else, and it'll have the exact same width, which, see how that lines up over there? That's great. I can grab this one and move it and place it there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a detail line here from this face to this face and then I'm going to grab each of these and mirror them using using this draw axis tool and we're going to use this midpoint and draw the line straight down and it'll flip that over based on that orientation. Now this is 300 wide. Again, I'm going to edit type, duplicate this one, call it 400, close those, and 
400. Click OK. That's a good width now. And let's move that right up to there. Now I don't need these lines. Now what's the quickest way that I can see this in 3D? If I select this element and this element using the control key to select both of those, uh, and then I can come up here to this selection box. If I click on that, it'll take my 3D view and it'll automatically change its crop extents, the, the, yeah, the selection box, to encompass the elements that I've just selected. And look at that, it's coming together. Although that color is awful. Let's change that to consistent colors. Let's go back to our floor plan and hit this flip button. Go back to 3D and that looks better. Let's go back to our ground floor, go component, load family. We're going to go up to, to furniture and appliances, electric appliances, and pick this. We'll use this cooktop four unit. Click OK. Hit the space bar to rotate that one and snap it with the middle of this. If we go back to our 3D and see what that looks like. All right, for the purposes of this, uh, just so that you can see, I will load in an upper cabinet. Components, 55, purpose made. And let's go down to the bottom and find the double door wall. Click open. Now this is a wall-based component. It means it has to live on this wall. Uh, so I'll click here and it'll shift over so that it lines up with that. Let's move this here and see that we're overlapping things. So 600 uh, is the smallest option that's there. So let's duplicate that and we'll call this 500. Ugh, I don't like that, but it'll work for now. Let's call it 500. Um, oh, actually this window doesn't line up. So let's use the align tool and align the center of this with the center of the window. Move that over. And now we've got even less. So Let's duplicate that one and call this 400. It is nice to duplicate just because you're not getting rid of something that already exists. And I will move you into the corner. And there's a bit of space there, that's good. And we'll copy this one over to this edge as well. So back to our 3D. That's okay. I don't like how things don't line up, but I'm, I'm trying to keep this simple. All right, let's load in a range hood because it's responsible. Furniture and appliances, electrical appliances, and range hood. Let's open this exhaust hood. Uh, we'll place it here for now. Um, let's edit this family. And you can see that this element is actually hosted to a wall. So I'm gonna go create, let's go file, new family, and go to an electrical fixture and click open. Let's go to the front and set up some reference planes real quick. I will do a very detailed talk on how to build families. Let's just keep it pretty simple. Create a new parameter, call this width, type, make this 600. Go to this view one, grab these guys, control C, front maybe, paste, and put it over there. We'll move this down to here. Oh, come on. Can't even move together. What happens if I move that down? Okay, can you move over? Move that over, pull this down, and there we go. Okay, this hopefully should work. So let's call this uh, height. Let's align this and lock it. And then I will make a dimension and pick each of these points. Maybe this will work. If we lock all of these, and then we take it height dimension. And you never want a dimension off of the level, by the way. You want to use that reference plane. So now we can click on this reference plane. Actually, let's just test it. Let's go 1200. Oh, good, it moves. Okay, let's edit type and call this height. 
and this will be a type parameter. That's okay. And uh, let's just say this is at 1800. All right, let's untick this and get rid of that dimension. Sorry, I did that really quick. Dimensions, you can click edit witness lines to add pieces or remove pieces of dimensions. So we got rid of that one there. Uh, remember to untick it. So now I'm going to take another one and I'm just going to do a really dirty uh, parameter here and we'll call this uh, top uh, top height and we'll give it an instance parameter and click OK. And this will mean that if we change this number, you go 600, it's just going to increase the height of that, which is good. All right, I'm going to save this in my Revit tutorial under families and we're going to call this, uh, no, it's quick range hood because I didn't really put a lot of thought or care into this. Uh, let's just go to the left real quick. Let's just grab these and move them over. Drag this up a little bit. Grab these, move them back. Okay, that'll work. Let's load this into first host tutorial. Click OK. Now this element is here. It's not going to show up in plan. Uh, very well, but I know that my pick point should be right there, so we're going to line it up with the back of this range. There, and now it says none of the things are visible in your view, but if I go to my 3D, I can click on this, I can hit the space bar a couple times, and now that's going to rotate around. I can delete this range hood because I don't need it anymore. Inside our 3D, we're going to have to make some adjustments and we're going to have to make some assumptions because we're not going to see that grip in there. 1400? That works. There you have it. That's probably the easiest way you can make a kitchen. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, please, please do. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good one.